lesson, I'm going to walk you through each step in writing your body paragraph. So here's how this is going to work. Anytime that you see a stop sign, I want you to pause the video and go and write that part of your body paragraph. Here's what I do not want you to do. Do not ignore the stop sign and watch the whole video. Let me repeat, do not ignore the stop sign and watch the whole video. So let's get started with our topic sentence. Your topic sentence is your claim. It's what you're arguing in that paragraph. It is your job as the writer to prove that that one sentence is true by the end of your paragraph. So where do you find your topic sentence? You're going to look at your outline. So these three sentences right here are your supporting arguments. These will become each of the topic sentences in your three body paragraphs. So you hopefully have already written your first body paragraph. So you are writing currently this paragraph, um, and this sentence here is your topic sentence. So my topic sentence is girls don't have enough STEM role models. So I'm going to ask you right now to stop, pause the video, and go and write your topic sentence in your composition notebook. Now we're going to introduce our evidence and write our textual evidence down. When we introduce our evidence, we're going to introduce the author and the source um, of uh, our textual evidence of the article that we read. So um, you have a variety of ways that you can introduce your evidence. You can really choose what is important to introduce about the author or your source. Um, and you're just going to plug in the information that it asks for in these sentence frames. So I am choosing um, this one right here. So I said Dan Mance, who is my author, so you're plugging into this space right here, the author's full name, Dan Mance, in an article titled, and now I'm writing down the title of the article, How Do We Get More Girls in STEM? Build Confidence. And then I'm saying where it's published, published in EdSurge, argues, comma. And the reason I have a comma here is that actually my evidence is going to follow this sentence. It's actually a part of this sentence. I'm breaking it up here, though, so you can really see each step. So here's my evidence. There's a massive gender imbalance that persists in STEM-related fields. Women make up half of the total U.S. college-educated workforce today, but holds only a quarter of the science and engineering jobs. And remember, I'm going to put my author's last name in parentheses afterwards, and then the period. So what I want you to do right now is I want for you to pause the video, to go back and to choose your best piece of evidence that is underneath that supporting argument, introduce it, choose one of these ways to introduce it, and then write your evidence down. Stop the video now and go introduce your textual evidence and then write your textual evidence down. Okay, let's get to reasoning. Reasoning, I think, is the hardest part of the body paragraph, and it is absolutely the most important. So our reasoning should be at least five to six sentences long. It should be the biggest chunk of your body paragraph. In your reasoning, it is your job to really help the reader understand both your claim and your evidence. So there are two parts to reasoning. You are supporting all parts of your claim. So by the end of your paragraph, it needs to be clear that you have supported all parts of your claim. And I need to see you explain and analyze your evidence. So we're going to get started today with explaining and analyzing our evidence. So I'm actually going to pull out my evidence here. And what I'm going to do when I explain or analyze my evidence is I'm going to make sure that I help the reader understand what this evidence is actually saying, and I'm going to kind of dig into it and make sense of it. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to do that through using these sentence starters. So I'm going to use a, a, at least um, two or three of these different sentence starters to talk about my evidence. But let's remind ourselves about my evidence. There is a massive gender imbalance that persists in STEM-related fields. Women make up half of the total U.S. college-educated edu workforce today, but holds only a quarter of the science and engineering jobs. 
So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure the reader really understands what this evidence is actually talking about. So I would encourage you to start with using one of these sentence sentence starters. Um, and I'm going to use um, this first one here. Okay, plugging in the author's last name and then using one of the verbs, shows, discusses, highlights, argues, claims, contends. Um, so I started with um, Mance, who is my author, highlights how few women are in STEM-related industries. So I'm just talking about what he is actually saying in this piece of evidence. He's showing, he's highlighting how little women are in these fields. Now I want to dig in, and I'm going to use one of these three questions to really dig into my evidence. Um, and there was actually a lot that I wanted to talk about with words or phrases. Words or phrases that I wanted to make sense of for the reader in this piece of evidence. Um, and the, the ones that I wanted to talk about were gender imbalance, um, and then the fact that he says that that, that gender imbalance persists, because I thought that was really interesting. So I said um, I'm using this sentence starter here. Um, the phrase blank means or suggests or implies. Um, and then I'm also going to use this sentence frame here. So those are the three that I'm using. The phrase gender imbalance means that the percentage of men and women in these jobs are not equal. When Mance uses the word persists, he suggests that this problem is not getting any better. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to look at your evidence and I want you to go and find two or three of these sentence starters that you can use to talk about that evidence. Make sure you at least do one from um, what the author is actually saying, helping the reader understand your evidence, and then one other or two others from these three questions. Okay, stop the video now and go explain and analyze your evidence. Here's the second part of your reasoning. The second part of your reasoning is supporting, making sure that you are supporting all parts of your claim. So the way that you're going to do that, I'm going to pull out my claim actually. Um, so my claim, um, my supporting argument is that girls don't have enough STEM role models. So what do I actually need to prove to you as the reader by the end of this paragraph? So what I'm going to do to make sure that I'm supporting all parts of my claim is I'm going to ask one or two or three questions that are going to help me um, to make sure that I support all parts of my claim. So I actually only had one sentence or one question um, after reading my claim. So my claim is that girls don't have enough STEM role models. So my question is just why is it important for girls to have STEM role models? So that is what I'm going to make sure to answer in my reasoning right now. You might have two or three questions like I did in my first body paragraph, um, but one is also fine if you only have one. So now I'm going to actually answer that question. I'm going to really make sure that I explain how girls don't have enough STEM mod role models and why that's important. Why is it a big deal that they don't have these role models? So here's my reasoning. Schools and tech organizations have been trying lots to, of creative approaches over the past decade to get girls interested in these fields, but it's not working. Why? Girls can't see themselves as scientists or engineers. So here's where I'm really starting to talk about why it's important for girls to have STEM role models. They can't see themselves in these fields. Young girls need to see women succeed in these fields in order to believe, here's really my answer, in order to believe that they can do it also. Because of how little women are in STEM, it's unlikely that most girls have a woman in their life who is in a STEM-related job. When girls are asked what they want to be when they grow up, they don't say doctor or tech leader because they don't know any women who have these jobs. So what I would love for you to do when you finish this section of your reasoning is to go read that question again that you wrote above your claim and to ask yourself, did I answer it? Did I answer it completely? Have I supported all parts of my claim? So what I want you to do right now is I want you to pause the video. I want for you to go and to support all parts of your claim. Start by writing one or two or three questions above your claim. And then get started answering those in your reasoning.
Now it's the concluding sentence. It's the easiest part, I feel like. Your concluding sentence is where you're going to restate your claim in a different way and connect it back to the central claim. So how does this paragraph support the central, the big umbrella argument? Um, this is a great place maybe to introduce your next supporting claim. You don't have to though. Um, so I am, um, I'm actually going to pull out my outline because I want to come back to here in my central claim, uh, sorry, in my concluding sentence, my big umbrella central claim. So my big umbrella essential claim is that girls lose interest in STEM in middle school and high school. So I'm going to actually come back to this middle school and high school part of my central claim. Um, so my concluding sentence, I'm restating my, my claim or my supporting argument or my topic sentence, um, and I'm connecting it back to my central claim. Middle and high school is a perfect time to spotlight the strong, creative women who are changing these industries and to help girls see themselves in these jobs. Okay, pause the video right now and go and write your concluding sentence. So at this point, you should have something that looks like this. I want you to notice that my reasoning is the largest chunk of my paragraph. It is so important that I hear, I see a huge chunk of that bright blue highlighter on your page because that is where you do all of the heavy lifting and supporting your, your claim or your supporting argument or your topic sentence. After you are done writing your body paragraph, what I would love for you to do either individually or with a partner is to go back through the rubric that is on the notebook page you glued in today and to really check off where you're at, right? Are you really making sure that you are including evidence that supports your topic sentence? Are you introducing and citing your evidence correctly? Are you supporting all parts of your topic sentence? And are you explaining and analyzing your evidence? Go and check off where you're at with just this one body paragraph. Get started.